When we're um, using the the Gordon growth model, we need an estimate of the long-run growth rate of dividends, um, sometimes called the sustainable uh, growth rate for those dividends. Now, we were talking about um, what a reasonable uh, long-run growth rate is. Uh, The Gordon growth model assumes that the company is going to be around forever, and so the long-run growth rate should probably be something in the the ballpark of 2 to 4 percent because that's what the overall economy of developed countries generally grows at. Um, But that's just sort of an assumption. Um, So now we're going to dig into how we can come up with a company-specific estimate of a sustainable growth rate. Now, this isn't going to be perfect, um, not by by any means, but it is uh, starting to get to, like I said, a company-specific sustainable growth rate for dividends. Now, to calculate this, what we're going to be uh, rooting it in is all about efficiency of the use of resources. So the first thing we need to talk about here is efficiency of uses uh, of those resources. And the measure we're going to, to be talking about here is return on equity, in particular, the return on book equity. So uh, ROE is, um, you can think of it as a measure of efficiency of for every unit of book equity, we get a certain amount of net income. So it's a measure of efficiency. um, It's a measure of efficiency in that it it, uh, tells you how well a, a manager is turning equity into net income, which is what we want. Um, so in order to calculate the, the growth rate, we need the, this measure of efficiency, ROE, and we're going to multiply it by uh, the retention ratio. So the retention ratio is how much of the previous period's book equity that they're holding back to reinvest in the company. This is sometimes called the plowback ratio. And the idea of calculating this growth rate is that it's both a function of how well managers are at turning book equity into net income and how much of that previous period's net income, or sorry, book equity that they're holding back in order to reinvest in the company and grow the overall company. So this is an imperfect um, analogy, but hopefully it will make sense. So let's think of um, ROE as the efficiency of a farmer at turning seed into full-blown corn plants. Um, So they start off with seeds, they water, fertilize, all that great stuff. And eventually at the uh, the end of the season, they harvest full-blown plants. So the better the... um, the farmer is at that, the more efficient they are at turning those seeds into full-blown plants. In our our sustainable growth rate, that's the equivalent of ROE. How efficient is the manager at turning equity into net income? The retention rate, or the retention ratio um, in our farmer analogy, is how much of the previous harvest's seeds um, the, the farmer is holding back to replant the next year. So if the farmer's really efficient at, um, at uh, turning seeds into uh, full-blown corn plants and they hold back a lot of seeds from the previous harvest, um, it would, it would uh, follow that they'll be able to have an even bigger harvest the next year. I know it's not a, a perfect analogy, um, but hopefully the, the idea comes across that the growth rate is both a function of how efficient the manager is at uh, converting equity or book equity into net income and how much um, of the previous period's book equity um, is held back. Now, book equity um, being held back is, uh, actually, that was uh, the, the language is a little bit loose there. The, the correct way to think about it um, is how much of their retained earnings is converted into to book equity. So they're retaining their earnings from the previous period, and that is what becomes the book equity, which, uh, which grows. Okay, so growth is equal to ROE times retention ratio. Now, because um, assets, or sorry, income does not disappear, um, it either has to stay inside the company, 
or it's paid out to shareholders. So those earnings are um, either paid out to shareholders in the form of dividends, or they're reinvested in the company and become new book equity, uh, which can be used to, to grow the company. So because our earnings don't disappear, um, we can estimate the uh, retention ratio as one minus the payout ratio. So this B here is the payout ratio. And the payout ratio is just the amount of dividends divided by earnings. So right here it says aggregate dividends divided by earnings. Um, you can also use dividends per share divided by earnings per share. Either one are totally valid. You just need to not divide um, dividends per share divided by total earnings. That just would not, uh, would not make sense. Anyhow, the, the sustainable growth rate of the company is the function of the efficiency of turning equity in, or book equity into net income and how much uh, uh, earnings are retained from the previous year to grow the company. Um, so uh, this is just a, a, a identity that we talked about um, in that earnings do not disappear, uh, that earnings are either paid out in aggregate uh, as a dividend or they're kept in the company to grow. Those retained earnings are what acts as a, a source of, of resources to grow the company. Okay, so ROE is a, um, a measure of efficiency. How efficient is that manager at turning um, book equity into net income? Now, sometimes it's, it's quite helpful to decompose um, ROE into, into various components. And that de decomposition um, is sometimes uh, called DuPont analysis or a DuPont formula. This is a, a, a this DuPont formula is really just a, a fancy way of multiplying ROE times one. And I'll, I'll I'll dig into exactly what I mean by that here in a second. So with ROE, um, we can break it into uh, three core components in a in a simplistic analysis. So if we multiply ROE, which is net income over equity, and we multiply it by sales over sales, which is just equal to one uh, mathematically, and assets over assets, which once again is just one, um, we can uh, this forms the basis for that DuPont analysis. You'll, you'll notice in that DuPont analysis where we're breaking up ROE into its constituent components, we have net income over sales. Well, that is this net income right here over this sales. We've got um, so that net income right there over that sales. When we've got uh, sales over assets, we have this sales in the numerator over this assets in the denominator. And finally, when we have assets over equity, we have this assets over this equity. So really the DuPont formula is just multiplying ROE times one. Now, let me dig into our interpretation of, of um, the DuPont decomposition. Okay, so ROE is broken into these three components, and each one of those has its own name. This net income over sales is a measure of efficiency of how well the, the manager turns sales into net income. This uh, unit is called your um, net profit margin. And like I said, it's a measure of efficiency of turning sales into net income. This quantity right here, um, sales over assets, is our measure, uh, or is called our asset turnover. And that is, once again, another measure of efficiency of how um, well the, the, the manager is using the assets to convert them into sales. Uh, this final term over here, assets over equity, this one's called your equity 
multiplier. And this is not necessarily a measure of efficiency, but it's a measure of leverage. Um, for every unit of book equity, how much assets uh, is the, uh, the manager able to attain? I call this leverage because the, the manager can also use debt to acquire more assets. They need some equity, um, but the more leverage you have, the more assets you can, you can purchase, the more assets you can acquire. So this term right here is financial in nature. So it's a measure of, of fi uh, financial performance or um, financial risk, if you want to think of it that way. These two terms over here are operational in nature. So these first two terms, net profit margin and asset turnover, are related to the fundamental economic operations of the company. So how good are they at manufacturing stuff, whatever that stuff is? Now, this decomposition is useful um, because let's say you've got this manager and they're like, oh, hey, um, we did really great this year. My skill uh, has led to an increase of ROE by 2%, and I'm, I'm really, really good. And you're like, hmm, is this manager feeding me uh, or blowing smoke in my face, or is this, this a real skill? Well, you could do a DuPont uh, analysis here and find out whether that increase is coming from improvements in operations, such as maybe the manager is putting in a, a lot of effort to uh, increase their sales performance um, uh, by more efficiently using the, the assets that they have. Um, so that would show up as an increase in asset turnover. Um, or maybe the manager's like really uh, working hard to increase their uh, their their net profit margin because they're working on reducing waste in the manufacturing process. Those are things that the the manager is doing. They're using skill. They're they're uh, they're generating value. Now, if you are doing this uh, Dupont analysis and um, ROE went up and that's what the, the manager is saying, I'm so good, I, I increased ROE. But then you look and you see that net profit margin was down and asset turnover was down, which is probably not what we really want. And the only reason they were able to in, uh, increase ROE was because they um, markedly increased their equity multiplier. I would be a little bit uh, suspicious if um, the, the manager was actually uh, improving the company. Um, increasing leverage is not something you can do indefinitely, and it makes the company riskier because they are taking on debt, which will increase the risk uh, to your equity. So um, this DuPont analysis is um, is useful to understand the the sources of value that a company is, um, or the, the sources of value. Are they running the company um, well, and improving their net profit margin or their asset turnover or any other uh, fundamental metric of the underlying operations of the company? Or are they just doing some um, financial reworking and increasing their leverage or decreasing that, their leverage in that, uh, for that matter uh, to adjust their ROE? So uh, just as a, as a sum up, um, we're... we're the goal here is to come up with a sustainable long-run growth rate. Um, in the back of your head, uh, a reasonable long-run growth rate is you know two to four percent. What the overall economy grows at, that seems uh, very reasonable. Um, but we can come up with a, a company-specific ROE, or sorry, a sustainable growth rate, by multiplying ROE, which is our measure of efficiency by our retention ratio, which is how much of the previous year's earnings are held back as, um, uh, as retained earnings, which becomes new equity to reinvest in the company.